Hello students, welcome to the class of Traffic Engineering and Management. So in the previous lectures, we have already studied about the various macroscopic parameters. You are clear now about the traffic flow, traffic density, traffic speed, space mean speed, uh, time mean speed, the difference between the two, all these things are clear. So today we are going to study in detail about the fundamental diagram. The fundamental diagram is the study of the relationship between the different macroscopic traffic flow parameters. So let us see in detail about the basic traffic stream models. So when we say fundamental diagrams, we study about the relationship between the various macroscopic traffic flow parameters. Now traffic speed and density, these are traffic flow parameters. Dear friends, please note down that when we say traffic speed, we have studied about two different speeds, time mean speed and space mean speed. But in doing the analysis, we do with the space mean speed because time mean speed is not always reliable because when, when you do the calculate do the study of the time mean speed that is a instantaneous or the spot speed while the space mean speed you are calculating the speed over a particular space so that is why it is more reliable so this is the re equation in front of you uh, which the relates between the speed and density you i hope all of you remember the basic the equation be between these three macroscopic parameters Q equal to U K. So here the speed density model says U equal to U F into one minus K divided by K J. This equation is a equation of a straight line. Please observe the figure. Here you see when the density is zero. Zero density means that when we say zero, that means negligible. Okay. Even that can be one vehicles per hour density. Okay. So when we, the density is negligible, the speed what will be the speed of the vehicles? If suppose at a stretch, what is density? The number of vehicles at a particular stretch of the road. Suppose uh, 50 vehicles per kilometer, that is the density. So now this in one kilometer road, if there is zero vehicles or it's only one vehicle, if suddenly then another vehicle comes at that particular point, what will be its speed? Its speed will be the maximum speed that that particular vehicle can attain. For some vehicles, it is 80 kilometers, for, for some vehicles, 100, for some vehicle, it may be 60. So that particular maximum speed that the vehicle will be attaining is known as what? As the free flow speed, okay? So when does a vehicle attain a free flow speed? When the de density is negligible. When the density is maximum, suppose this is a one kilometer stretch of road, road it is packed with vehicles, then what will be the density? That density will be maximum. So what is that density known as? That density is known as the jam density. Why it is known as jam density? Because that condition is known as a traffic jam condition. I hope the concepts are clear. What is free flow speed? What is jam density? What is the relation between speed and density? What type of relation it follows? It follows a linear relation, straight line relation. Let us move forward. The relation between flow and density. We have our master equation Q equal to UK. In that particular equation, you substitute the value of U that you have just now obtained okay u is equal to uf into 1 minus k divided by k j okay so we can write q equal to uf into k minus k square by k j this is a parabolic equation why because we have k square term okay uf and k j are constants q and k are variables so here we are representing the flow q in the Y, y axis and we are representing the value of k in the x axis. So this line is not an inclined line as seen here in the diagram. This line is a perfectly, will be a perfectly straight line. Okay. So here you have to understand one very important thing. The j, kj, that is the jam density, that is the maximum density. The maximum flow is q cap. When the flow is reaching the maximum value, then there uh, Vehicles are, are not packing the entire distance, okay? Q is calculated at a particular point. Now, suppose this is a particular stretch you are considering where you will study the density, but you will not study the uh, flow at a particular stretch. You will study the flow at a particular point, okay? So when you are studying the flow at a particular point, how many vehicles are crossing this particular point at a particular for a uh, period of time? So that 
quantity if it reaches maximum that is known as the q cap that is the maximum flow that is reaching okay so when maximum flow it is reaching that is not the jam condition why because max in the jam condition the flow that is the number of vehicles crossing this particular point will be minimum will be very less will be tending to zero because when is jam condition there is no flow occurring okay so when the flow is occurring that means the maximum flow is occurring that means there is no jam the vehicles are moving at very desired speed the vehicles are moving at designed speed although the vehicles are not moving at their maximum speed but their vehicles are moving at decent speed then what will happen the number of vehicles that they are moving will be reaching to maximum that are crossing that particular point and that maximum value is known as what q cap or only capacity also we say it so at the point capacity point whatever is the speed that is known as the u cap or whatever is the density at that particular point is known as k cap now we will study in detail the relationship between this q cap u cap and k cap q equal to u cap so q cap will be equal to u cap into k cap so we will try to obtain the values of u cap and k cap so dear students moving forward see at maximum we know uh, that when you have studied the maxima and minima from differential equations you know that for maximum value dy by dx equal to zero so at maximum value that is q cap dq by dk will be equal to zero so when d by dk of q is equal to zero basic mathematics in place of q you can write this equation uf into k minus uh, k square by kj so d by dk of this particular equation will be equal to zero which gives the equation number 17 uf equal into 1 minus 2k by kj equal to zero so uf is a uh, constant value that will have the free flow speed will be equal to 60 70 80 90 100 kilometers per hour so that can never be zero so 1 minus 2k by kj will be equal to zero so this gives that k equal to kj by 2 what k is this now this k you are calculating actually considering the q cap so when you since you are considering q cap so this k cap will be equal to kj by 2 so now let us move forward and find the value of u cap so uh, to find the value of u cap we, we substitute equation 18 in the equation 15 what is equation 15 uh, the value of u is equal to uf into 1 minus k by kj okay so in place of k we can write kj by 2 in place of because we are we are considering capacity condition so k will be k cap so in the k cap is equal to kj by 2 so this gives u cap is equal to what uf by okay uf is equal to uf by 2 and k cap is equal to kj by 2 at capacity okay when the flow is at capacity when the maximum number of vehicles are crossing a particular point that is the capacity flow when that capacity flow is occurring the flow is known as q cap and what is the k cap kj by 2 what is the u cap uf by 2 okay that means try to understand u at capacity flow if a particular vehicle is having a free flow speed of 120 kilometers per hour that means when maximum number of vehicles is crossing at that part to a particular point the speed of that vehicle will be approximately 60 kilometers per hour that is uf by 2 120 by 2 if the uf is 90 then 90 by 2 is equal to 45 kilometer per hour will be the u cap so now substitute this equation number 18 and equation number 19 in equation 14 what is equation 14 q equal to u k so q cap is equal to u cap k cap so q cap will be equal to u f by 2 multiplied by k j by 2 is equal to u f k j divided by 4 it's a very important equation q cap is equal to u f k j by 4 very many times you will find multiple choice questions in examinations like gate from this particular equations Dear students, if you are not writing down, then there is no point listening to this video. I am repeating, please write it down, these equations in your notebook. Pause the video, write it down, try to understand now itself. Do not think that I will write it down now, I will understand later on. Try to understand the basic concepts. Traffic flow is, study traffic flow is nothing but the study of mathematics, basic mathematics. We do not, we are not going any depth of some high funda mathematics this is basic, basic mathematics all of you know this very well just you have to put some time to realize the things so i think now we can move forward to the third important relation that is the speed flow model the relation between the speed and flow 
So again, we are we will go back to the equation 15 u is equal to uf into 1 minus kz. From this equation, we will spread out k and get k in terms of uh, u. k is equal to kj into 1 minus u by uf. This is equation number 21. Now substitute this equation 21 in our initial equation 14 q equal to u k. So we get what do we obtain? Q is equal to u into kj into 1 minus u by uf which gives k u q is equal to kj u minus u square by uf. What type of equation it is? Since we are having a square term, this is a parabolic equation. So the diagram is shown in the, the graph is shown in this slide. So the speed is represented in the y axis, the flow is represented in the x axis. So you can observe here one thing. For flow to be zero, there are two different speeds. Can you understand the meaning of this? There is zero flow. Okay, that means the number of vehicles crossing this particular point is negligible. Zero means, okay. How can there be two different speeds? If there is less vehicles flowing, then that means the speed should be zero or the speed should be maximum UF. How? Now, just uh, imagine you are standing at a particular point, okay, and you are counting the vehicles. Suppose, for example, you are standing here at early morning, four o'clock. So what is the flow happening here? The flow is very less, obviously, isn't it? The number of vehicles coming at this early morning is very less. No one has to go to school at four o'clock. No one has to go to office. No one has to go to any relative's home at early morning, four o'clock. So you are standing here and you counted very less vehicles. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, maybe. Okay. So what is the speeds of those vehicles? Those vehicles are going at their maximum speeds at their free flow speeds, maybe 100 or 120, 140 kilometers per hour, isn't it? Now, keep that aside. Zero flow speed is maximum. Understood? Next point. You are standing the same point at that very point. Evening five o'clock. It's the end of the office hours. People are rushing from works. Traffic jam is occurring. So many people are coming out for different works at the evening five o'clock to 5.30, six o'clock. So you are standing at this point and there is a traffic jam at this point. It's a very uh, premium, it's a point where lots of traffic are there, urban location. So huge traffic is there. So when there is traffic jam condition, how many vehicles are crossing this point? Okay, you stood for there for 15 minutes, suppose. You may say that for in 15 minutes, only two vehicles crossed because it's a jam. The, the road length is packed. So, since negligible vehicles crossed approximately zero, okay, the Q is less. And what were the speeds of those vehicles? The speeds of those vehicles were also very less, maybe zero, five, 10, 15. If it is jam stuck, the speed is zero. If it is moving very slowly, maybe five kilometers per hour, isn't it tending to zero? So the speed is zero even when Q is zero. The speed is uh, at free flow also when the Q is zero. Both the conditions are different. So at every value of Q, you will get two different values of speeds. It is because of nothing but this parabolic function, square equation, okay? I hope you have understood the fundamentals. I have tried my best to explain you in detail all the relationships. If still there is any problem, try to first of all focus and realize the real life situation. You will understand it. Even though if there is any problem in understanding, please contact me. Next, there is one problem to you for you to solve to calculate the space mean speeds. The data are given to you. So, as I have said, that for a particular Q, there will be two space two space mean speeds. So, you will also get two different space mean speeds. I have given the answers also to you. So, I hope that all of you will solve this problem before the next class. So, this is the end of the fundamental diagram. So, I hope that the concepts related to the fundamental diagram, basic traffic stream models. And the relationships, this fundamental diagram is basically the relationships between the various microscopic parameters, sorry, various macroscopic parameters. I hope that these relationships are clear to you. Let me tell you, when you're studying traffic engineering, the fundamentals, the understanding of these relationships is very important. If someone, if you go tomorrow and tell someone that I have studied traffic as my elective, people will ask you, what have you studied? 
So you must be able to say at least that I have studied the fundamental diagrams. I have studied the relationships between the macroscopic characteristics. Okay. I hope it was fun learning. Okay, then. Thank you. And see you in the next class.